Welcome back everyone to another uh, Dark Souls 2 lore through. Um, today we're going to finish up Forest Fallen Giants and, and look into uh, Hades Tower of Flame. <clears throat> Alright, so let us go and try to beat the uh, Pursuer who seems to be following us around. Well. We wouldn't know that at this point, but maybe we can grab a little mate. Galahad. Nope. Okay. I like how this guy doesn't come alive when we go by. It's nice. Um. I re oops, I really hate these guys over here. Oops. Ooh. That was close. All right. So yeah, this door was locked, and it's now openable by the soldier key. I guess let's keep this all s sorcery. Ooh, these guys are powerful. Oh. Oh. Why did I de-equip? Fun. Royal Swordsman Gloves. I don't know what those give us in terms of lore. Gloves of the Royal Swordsman. Their shape provides defense while allowing great mobility. Stripped of ornamentation, King Vendrick supplied his bravest men with the best armor available to face the great giants. Very few returned alive. I don't know about that. Um, sure. Finest men. It's fine. <sighs> wow. I did all my health. I love how they just like jump in on you like So we're going to fight the Pursuer, and we'll see how that goes this time around. Just don't get hit by his uh, curse attack. That's the key. And if we can, we could use the weapons. Okay. That I tried. Don't even want to mess with that this time.
this will be a little bit of a simpler time. We've obviously upgraded our stuff, and we have more ADP. Oh, didn't even want to get close to that. Soul of the Pursuer and Ring of Blades. Now you can see we're on the top here, and we we're talking about these two statues. There's this one, and this one. So that means that Majula is just over that ridge. But his arm fell off right here, and it pierced the fortress, and this guy's head rolled off and became. It's amazing to see how big it is once you're actually standing next to it. But it's got this nice crack through the center that you can walk through. It's nice. Alright, Ring of Blades. Oh, I didn't put on the Ring of Restoration. The Ring of Blades is modeled after the Mad Knight of Alkin's weapon of choice. Increases physical attack. The kingdoms of Alkin and Ven long ago flourished on these very grounds. They were both founded by the same man, but were reduced to rivalry and spite. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> they were both founded by the same man. Huh. Okay. Well, Alkin and Ven we're going to hear a lot about, and, uh, and they're... Uh, They're one of the main, like, subplots of this game. So, I'll, I'll equip that. That's good. Uh, and for now, 45. I'll just check if we're good. We do have the Royal Swordsman. Okay. Should be good for now. Uh, there's stamina recovery, but I usually don't have a problem with stamina management, so... Uh, so we can see that guy that was approaching us earlier still attacking the another one of these giants that's grown into a tree type thing. We can examine this one as well. Alas, nothing happens. Uh, there's an item down here. Uh, there's a set of items that tells a story here. Drain like sword, shield, mail, gauntlets, and leggings. Not the helm. Everything but the helm. Let's read about it. Alright, so... Uh, where would it be here? This Great Sword of Drummond, Royal Army Captain. An old and adorn unadorned sword, perhaps, but the pride and joy of the venerable captain. An heirloom passed from grandfather to father and then from father to son. Drummond and those before him used this sword to repel those who had threatened their great land. Captain Drummond's shield. Even with its embossing terribly worn, this shield exudes pride and authority. An heirloom passed from grandfather to father, father to son. So it seems that uh, traditional Drang Lake armor belonged to Captain Drummond. Drummond's ancestors have served Drang Lake for generations, principally as defenders of the Great Fort. But Captain Drummond is the last in this proud line. Um, so Captain Drummond is certainly a character that we will deal with and meet and, and do all that fun stuff. But we know that the um, fort was constructed for the giants. Um, we just read that. We also see that, um, that I mean, Drummond's ancestors have served Drang Lake for generations, principally as, of de as defenders of the great fort. So to me, that indicates that the war of the giants at this great fort, which was constructed for that war, has been going on for generations. But Captain Drummond is the last in this proud line. AKA, he, they won or they failed at, at his timeline. 
Alright, same story there. Yes. Uh, we read the Ring of Blades, but then we need to read uh, The Soul of the Pursuer. Soul of the Pursuer who lur lurks in Drang Lake. The Pursuer who seeks the bearer of the sign, us in this case, will not rest until his target is slain. Uh, so yeah, he seems to have it out for us for some reason. Um, okay, let's see if we can get by here without causing too much trouble. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go through with this, but I'm actually not going to continue here. I'm going to go back and go to Hades Tower of Flame. After we go... Like, how does this happen? I guess, you know, the the person, the people that made this model, yeah, it doesn't have a back. But the person that made the model of this button, <laughs> or this thing here, just didn't tie it to the rest of the, the object. So when it fell apart, it had no physics, it had no idea to fall apart, or I don't know. Like, how does that reasonably happen? Especially without being checked. All right. Well, you know, we have a crow's nest here. So there's there was a crow that carried the pursuer, so maybe... Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is where the pursuer went to go get picked up by them again, but I guess only if he wanted to go to the Lost Bastille. <laughs> and drops me so haphazardly. There are two chests here now. Okay. Well, I mean, I was just gonna go back, but I mean, the tower apart. But I have to check out these. Okay. Okay, they seem this one's dull ember. What? Okay. When I played the original game, there was only one ember in the game, and it allowed me to do all ascensions. I don't know if it was called the dull ember or not. But it was hard to get. I mean, it was at least, you know, he had to go get it and it was far away in the game. So if that's the same thing, I'll read the description. I'll remember that the description is the same because I like the description. But, uh, okay. And then human effigy. Okay, well, let's read this. This is interesting. An ember radiating dull light. This flame seems nearly exhausted, but exhibits an eerie resilience. Perhaps this is its ordinary state. Yeah, this is it. I mean, this is the ember. Yeah, okay, so the person we give the ember to is in the Lost Bastille. I don't know about this. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, we'll go with that. Um, well, let's go back to Dra uh, Majula. I was going to say Drain Lake. I'm pretty sure that this whole place is during like, even though some of it can be considered Van and Alkin and um, there's Olafus and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Well, we'll learn all about it. Bearer of the curse. Yeah, yeah, we yes, don't need please. to go through this each time. Okay, let's level up. Um, so what are we gonna do? Are we doing strength or dex? I'm a dex guy. Do we need adaptability? I think we're good for now with that. Um, I'm going 
gonna I'm just gonna push it all into decks. Go to the forest of fallen giants. <laughs> to hide its tower flame. So this is an interesting thing. Uh, I will certainly talk about this at a later date. Uh, but there is a place here where um, we can go this way or we can go this way. Um, we can go different places at different times. So, I mean, right now we can only go to hides. And it, the item over here indicates that we can go here someday. Um, there's this contraption in the middle. And the contraption doesn't move. So we only have to go here. But we should certainly keep this... Uh, uh, keep aware of that for the future. Alright, so there's this used to be a shield over here. The Crimson Parma. Fancy name and nif nifty paint are surely a merchant's efforts to make a very ordinary shield more, ordinary shield more attractive. Um I feel like in this game, when you come across a an item on the ground or in a chest, well, in a chest not so much, but when you you come across more chests and you come across more items, and when you find them and get to them, this is another loading zone, by the way. Although it's a little bit less, <laughs> it's a little bit more forgivable than the Forest of Fallen Giants one. But when you you come across an item, it's almost always an item. In, in Dark Souls, they're all souls. There's no items. I mean, there's some items. There's like default... There's items. Whatever. I, I'm probably wrong about that, but... Okay, so this is definitely the biggest change that I've heard uh, about all this stuff. I mean, so there's hide knights all over this place where... I don't think there was a single one when I played it. Um, also, there's a big dragon up there. Um, we can see the Tower of Flame. There's flame shooting through that. Um, I don't know if how these come alive, so I guess I don't know if I need to attack them. But anyway... Um, yeah, we can see Majula, or well, so we can see the Forest of Fallen Giants, that's the head of the thing. And I assume we'll be able to see Majula from here. Um, I'm not interested in this boy. Okay. Yeah. Hides Ruin. So yeah, I mean... I don't know if there's a good way to fully see it here, but um, you certainly can see that tower that we saw and where the crestfallen warrior, crestfallen warrior was. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, sure. Come on, come on. Now, Dark Souls 2 doesn't have that issue of um, connectivity, so um, you can also break out of all of your uh, um, expressions in this game, whereas in Dark Souls 2, once you committed to one... <laughs> How is he half health? 
Oh, he doesn't drop anything anymore. Wow, he used to drop a bonfire aesthetic. Okay. I guess with this guy in here now, we're gonna have to maybe move faster. We got some Lloyd's talisman here. He doesn't do a lot of damage, does he? Because wasn't he fighting this guy and... That guy was like barely any health. Um, so that... Well, killing that guy opens up this thing and it's meant to show you that if you uh, pull this... There's a... Uh, a level that comes up from the ground there and, uh, and gives you more space. Okay, get out of my way, you fuck. Oh. All right. So this area looks more intimidating than it is. There's these three guys here, but they only have the one guy. These guys back off. Then it become ooh, it's it's different now. They now put the. Stone. Well, we'll have to read that later. It used to be you had to kill all three in order for this to come up. <laughs> and he's gonna show me. Yep, 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 I know. Okay, we'll, we'll pull that. And that will pull up. There it is. Got it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Th thank you. We're not. Go or no. We're not following. We're yeah. We're going this way. So now we have all of the um, all of the layers pulled up so that we can uh, fight the dragon rider without falling off. Although, oops. Although he cannot fall fall off anymore, which. Is a way to kill him. Okay, um. Okay, yeah. You want me to grab this guy? Let's do it. Masterless Glencore. Alright, well, let's just. Let's just do it. Palestone. They keep dropping pale stones. Alright, let's, uh. Let's try this Dragon Rider here. So, in Hyde's Tower of Flame, there are things to do with dragons. There's a dragon here, there's a dragon rider, there's a dragon hunter. Uh, we'll get to other people later. Yeah, we're just... So yeah, there's like a couple of different rings out here. Um, this main big ring and this small ring uh, that we came up with, or that we, when we pulled all the things and they appeared, we would fall off uh, normally, but also the uh, Dragon Rider could too as well. That's actually a speedrunning tactic. <coughs> Alright, well. Thank you so much, KMA. You were so invaluable. I hope you enjoy your, like, 6,000 souls for that. Alright. Yep. See ya. Alright, let's look at this Pale Stone. That's the one thing that we've been getting. An altered state of Titanite used on a weapon or shield to undo its imbued powers. This does not revert reinforcement, but undoes imbued powers such as magic fire points. That's pretty, you know, straightforward. Um, and then we have the Dragon Rider Soul, of course. Soul of a Dragon Rider, who faithfully served King Vendrick. Long ago, the Dragon Riders mounted worms and were feared on the battlefield for their unparalleled strength. It is interesting because... Obviously, in Dark Souls, oh, we got a cracked blue eye orb. In Dark Souls One, you know, siding with the dragons was 
probably tantamount to um, treason. You know, I mean, like at this in this state. You know, using dragons for your own benefit in in battle, no matter who you're fighting, whether it's the giants or someone else, is is accepted. <clears throat> so um, the dragon riders were one that did that. So it's interesting. It's a very different culture than uh, Lordran. Online play item can only be used by members of the Blue Sentinels Covenant. Punish the guilty to strengthen the bond with your covenant. So this is similar to the Blades of the Dark Moon, although it's a far cry. Is that Hide Knight gone? Mm -hmm. So you beat the Dragon Rider and he... They just become aggressive. Knight sword. That's kind of similar to the sword I have, but it has lightning. Those are like, <clears throat> they look like Solaire, you know, so. You know. Hide Knight sword. Straight sword originating from in Hide. A special alloy makes it very durable. The composition of the alloy of these swords remains a mystery, but in Drang Lake, the attempt to imitate it resulted in the similar brad and, brad and steel. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this suggests that Solaire went on to, like, create a cult or whatever, or if just, like, through his legend or through his whatever. I mean, in our game, he defeated Lord Gwyn, so that's pretty impressive. And then we get the Ring of Binding here, which used to be up by the uh, other boss in this area. Let's see what that says. An unusual ring of unknown origin limits the wearer's HP reduction when hollow. Alas, this ring will not make you human, but what is lost is not uh, what is lost is not easily retrieved. So yeah, basically, when you die enough times, your health eventually goes to half. This will make the maximum seventy-five percent. So there's that. Um, it's like the One Ring in Demon Souls, because Demon Souls is the same. I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if it halves your health, but it certainly gives you a, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it limits your HP when you're not human, and um, and there's <coughs> a ring that gives you more souls. So yeah, there's a bonfire up here. And there's this woman that is kneeling out to what looks like another city out there. And uh, we should talk to her and see what she's got to say. Are you from these parts? My name is Lysia. I have come to spread the art of miracles, a practice of which I am a disciple. I can see that you are well suited to comprehend their wondrous power. But the cost of it, that's for your heart to decide. Hmm. Interesting. So, Lysia of Lindelt. Uh, we've learned about Lindelt a little bit, the house of Asteria. <clears throat> but uh, uh, this is the first person we've met from there. Shows she is the cleric, cleric's sacred chime, which we've read before. Um, and we know that, well, I've said that clerics come from Lindelt. <coughs> so, anyway. Ring of Prayer. Increases faith. This is cool. This is another interesting addition uh, that Dark Souls 2 made over Dark Souls 1. They have rings that, like, modify your base stats and stuff. It's pretty cool. 
A ring blessed by the high priest of Volgan. Okay, so now we're talking about Volgan which we know is popular for its merchants. The clerics of the great city of Volgan are perennially entrenched in scandalous power struggles, but among them remain a few strong-willed upstanding noblemen. Getting a little picture of Volgan. She has lots of uh, miracles, and we know that in the original Dark Souls, miracles were just things that were written down, um, and tales of the gods, essentially. And um, so I'd be interested to see what a lot. I mean, we got heal. We have what looks like um, not repair, but what's the one that heals you from ailments? We have lightning spear. We have homeward. We have seek guidance. I mean, we have ones that we know about from Dark Souls One. So I'd be interested to see what they say in this case. Heal. Healing, miracle used by clerics, uh, and then it tells you how to use them. Uh, miracles are tales of the gods passed down long ago, but only a small number of the original tomes remained in their entirety, and most that exist are restorations. I don't think there was a medium heal in um, Dark Souls 1. Uh, I think there was heal and great heal and great heal excerpt and all that stuff, so I think that this might be a reference to the tome that was uh, a restoration. Great Heal excerpt. Its effect is the same as Great Heal, but has limited uses. Bye. The erudite uh, Great Heal tome requires extensive training to properly interpret, making it accessible to only a few. So this is the excerpt of that. Replenishment. This, I think this might be Bountiful Sunlight or one of those, but um, in this game, Replenishment. This miracle is used by the resolute Lindelf Cleric Knights when fighting on the front lines. There's a story passed down through generations claiming this band of knights once felled a poisonous dragon which menaced an entire nation. Well, we dealt with a number of poisonous dragons in Dark Souls 1, so. Resplendent Life. A great miracle used by highly ranked clerics. Cleric Forsale of Lindell was a master of miracles who fought battles across the lands. His allies called him the Holy Knight, but his enemies feared him for his, quote, demonic powers. We don't learn a ton about Forsale, but um, it is interesting to learn about the culture of Lindell. Um, they, you know, contain clerics, they c contain cleric knights, holy knights. And um, and in some cases, the miracles were in the category of what they called demonic. It's interesting. Caressing prayer, an elementary uh, miracle for clerics, purifies the body, removing poison. Yeah. Uh, this spell was recently developed and may not be an authentic miracle. So yeah, in Dark Souls One, this it's remedy is the name of it, and it's a um, sorcery. Uh, it has the same icon or similar icon, but this one is saying it might not be a miracle because it was originally a sorcery. Force, we know this one, pushes nearby foes back but leaves them unhurt. Does not directly cause damage, but can be highly effective with little ingenuity. We know force, and we know that emit force, and we know wrath of the gods are all from the same tales. Alright, a mir lightning spear. A miracle that launches a spear of lightning, said to be the legacy of an ancient clan whose leader was revered as the god of sun. Hmm. So, okay, the name of the clan has been lost to time, but the gross incandescence of our, magnific our magnificent father shall never wane. I mean, this is just, you know, bordering on the level of uh, fan service, but in terms of how it's describing it but yeah it's it's um it's talking about a clan the the uh, warriors of the sunlight and it actually didn't revere the god of sun but the god of war but he inherited the sun from his father and uh obviously solaire who was a warrior of the sunlight um but wasn't the leader uh well Technically, we don't 100% know that, but we will certainly learn that by the end of the series. But he says, if only I could be so grossly incandescent. And he was looking for a magnificent, magnificent sun. 
who could be a father. I don't know. It's a little bit fan servicey. Homeward, which is an interesting miracle. A miracle that returns its caster to the last bonfire. Um, traditionally, its destination was the caster's homeland. It's the same as in Dark Souls 1. The curse slowly erodes one's memory, even until even one's birthplace is reduced to a figment of, cloud, of a clouded past. But the bonfires are constant, a beacon for the tragically afflicted. And that's a great modification um, for the purposes of this story. Um, that's how it exists in Dark Souls 1, but adapted for Dark Souls 2. I really like how they describe that. Seek Guidance, a miracle created to help those who have lost their way, reveals more messages. Countless worlds loosely overlap, and at the seams of contact, kindred souls who have lost their way call out to one another with fleeting messages of hope. I'd heard awful rumors about this place, and I'm afraid they were all true. The king, gone. The earth, ravaged. The burden on the people weighs heavy. I fear that, by now, they may have scarce room in their hearts for miracles. Hmm. So she heard about this place, and she seems like she wants to come and... Oh, that's interesting. I can see the Hyde Knight in the background walking around. She seems to uh, say that she came to this land for the purpose of spreading miracles. She's not sure if in their hearts they will be able to accept them. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll learn more about this character and what she's doing. I guess we'll learn a lot more now, but we'll learn more about her as the game progresses. Why did I come here? Well... Do I need any other reason than to spread the gospel of miracles? My preceptor always said this art should be shared with the world. And such is my only wish. Okay, very clear. Sometimes I fight the urge to pack up and go back home. It is... Well, I must do this. And being out here all alone only makes this a more fitting test of my fortitude. Is she a noble character? I expected this cathedral to be bustling, but there's hardly a soul to be found here. Without any goings on, I'll have to move soon. To a place I could gull the... Sorry, help the gullible by teaching the good word. <laughs> she seems like she wants to uh, manipulate people. <clears throat> Interesting. I expected this cathedral with to no need for miracles. No. Nope. The gods frown upon such soul scrimpers. Really? Well, I guess I should pay you then. Yeah, the Hyde Knights, I guess when you kill the Dragon Rider, the Hyde Knights are like all up in arms. It's all new to me, the, this aspect of Scholar of the First Sin. We'll, we'll be back around here uh, when we get a little bit more power and, uh, and we have reason to do so. Um, we'll come back and uh, go the opposite direction. There was two ways to go. We went one and there's another one, so... All right. Monastery charm. A blessed charm. Many such charms were blessed in reconstructed ancient ceremonies carried out in the monastery of Lindelt, now known as the new home of miracles. Pretty, pretty clear right there. Lindelt miracles. Uh, they did talk about Volgan in one of those things where the clerics were uh, increase the f the ring that increases faith comes from Volgan, but most of the miracle based stuff comes from Lindelt. Though it may be lack power of an original, uh, in circumstances dire enough, an imitation would be quite enough. 
It is an interesting uh, inscription on it. So yeah, I guess one thing is that we see these old knights. Oh wow, that hit me. Whoa. That was a weird uh, movement that it made. Um, so we'll see these knights again. I will comment on them at that point, at that stage when we see them again, if it matters, but, um, yeah, these knights are guarding Hyde's Tower of Flame, plus the Hyde knights are doing it as well, Dark Trouches. Trouches with an inexplicably pungent odor, temporary boosts dark uh, defense. Verbal histories often mention Saint Elizabeth. Her uniquely concocted medicines and potions are still widely used today. Well, we met Elizabeth in the end of Dark Souls 1. She was a mushroom. She gave us the uh, Elizabeth mushroom, which healed us, so she obviously created more. Alright. Old Knight Halberd. An undated halberd, wielded by a warrior from a time so ancient that there exists no record of his endeavors, has extremely low durability. Sometimes, just as a thing falls to pieces, it unleashes its last flash of great power. What is this referring to? So old. Oops. What? What is that from? I don't know what that's from. Dark Souls 1. Huh. Cyan Knights here too. Um, okay. Let's fight it. There's a image of the sun on here, yeah, we can't really do anything with the... Uh, I just don't know if they're going to be so powerful. Okay. Didn't drop anything. I wonder why the Cyan Knights are... Ooh, Sublime Bone Dust. This has an interesting description, and it's a great item. Um, Sublime Bone Dust. I mean, where possibly would that be? Oh, here it is. Charred Ashen Bones. Cast them into the Far Fire in Majula to increase HP restored with each use of your flask. They say these are the remains of a saint who cast himself into the bonfire, but we will never know for sure, for soot and ashes tell no story. It used to be Fire Keeper Souls that boosted our... Um, Estus, but now it's a another element of bone that does it. Like the homeward bone, like the bonfire. And they continue with that into Dark Souls 3. the fire keepers and the fire keeper souls are very tied to Dark Souls 1. No sense in rehashing that. Really? That's interesting. I like how you can attempt to do a backstab but not get it. 
basilisk. Huh, and there's another path blocked by it for us. Weird. <laughs> there must be a lot more fragrant branches of yore in this game because uh, that is uh, it's a lot to just get to these areas. Like, I mean, they must have some really great stuff because they're so rare and expensive. All right. Where's Luca Teal? Man, I guess I'll have to like look everywhere and do stuff because I mean, Luca There's one place that Luca Teal is that's really hidden in the original game. So, I mean, if she's gone here, like where? I mean, is she in some hidden place? I'm gonna have to check everywhere. Let's go back to the far fire. We obviously have 14,000 souls. I think we're good with ADP. Bearer of the Let us go up here and then we'll go. We'll start doing health. Unlike last time, <laughs> let's just pump health for a little bit. Do we have a. Bearer Oops. of the curse. Uh, we didn't get any more arch souls, so let's get some more. Thanks. Okay. Well, that is uh, Hyde's Tower of Flame, I guess. So, um, one thing I will point out, which we'll get to a little bit later is that now there's a white light <laughs> beaming from this area so that's, that's different so um, I guess that's our indication that something's changed and we should go look at that um, but yeah um, that was this episode and we'll see you in the next one bye